15 minutes zero increment game see how we get on today so we're going to um we've been doing a bit of practice with the pattern type stuff and just going to grab here one key thing from me let's just take this one key thing for me is that you don't force the pattern it's based basically on what the opponent does so it's a matter of just taking time and looking for the nice positions and if the opponent then gives you a pattern that you can potentially take I'm going to put a check on the king, bishop comes out, defends and pushing the pawn here just to stop the knight from jumping to these squares so everything looks a little bit tight in this center here so there's no no current the ace attacking so it's a single attack we could bring the bishop here the rook comes to attack it or we could just bring the bishop back into this little little den so the knight is out we want our knight out um, I'm going to come here to go here to attack the bishop obviously the knight's going to take it off the board so I'm going to continue with that so just take with the bishop yeah so ownership of a file is going to be key but when you've got the bishops blocking the area it's quite difficult to really get that to work so I'm going to bring the bishop back again to where it started well where we placed it last time and the knight doesn't have any de defense on so if we bring the rook here we can't take this pawn because the bishop is on so you can probably expect the pawn to push down which probably means we bring the rook back we come here and if they forget themselves this bishop doesn't have any protection apart from the king so it does so we're going to bring the rook back if they forget themselves the knight comes here looking to take the rook off the board so then we've got the double on the bishop like we mentioned so the bishop is going to have to move um, there but then we'll get this bishop because we've got a 2 on one on either of the bishops that's the way that I see that so that kind of pattern recognition happened very quickly but we did mention it before it actually got to this state so finding those types of positions is good so like we said we can take now with a check and also take the other bishop off the board now because it didn't move far enough away now just going to halt for a second just to make sure that we're not losing out so let's grab so we've got two minor pieces up at the moment so they're looking to trade down so we can afford to trade down but we don't have any pieces that are actually protecting this square and our king is really deep into the trenches so we take his rook takes so there's one of two things that we can do we can move the rook just to the side could move it up so that the knight or the bishop takes I think we're just going to move it up keeping it simple and he wants this pawn passed is that correct okay let's just take this pawn here we have two pieces defending this area at the moment um, is there anything else that we can do should we just take it off the board now and then this pawn is just acting like a passer the bishop can block it can't it let's just take it off the board let's not confuse it or shall we keep the bishop no the knight's more flexible in this sort of situation I think so I think we need to keep the knight yes let's do this bring this rook down here and then bring the bishop up again attacking this way and if the pawn takes we're in fact just get the king across here let's just move the king across because you know they'll end up getting a cheap sort of let's just go here and then bring the bishop here attacking the pawn so the rook's going to come and defend sorry the rook can't take the bishop because the rook oh Rook's got an x-ray through, so we're going to put a check on the king and then take the pawn, put a check on the king and 
Put the king here. Let's not rush this. Blocking the pawn. You know, I could have won their rook, you know. Could have just gone here because I would have had a discover check on his um Do, do, do. So it's coming for my knight. The king can't come for the knight. And I've got a sign saying they've left the game. Oh, well, we'll claim victory on that. So that was an interesting game there of um, practicing the pattern stuff. And the it gave us a bit of an advantage in being able to take the uh, pawn, the bishops. Well, yeah, the bishops off the board. i do a quick analysis of that one. Two inaccuracies, one mistake, three blunders for me, and two inaccuracies, three mistakes, and three blunders for the opponent. Okay, so there are thereabouts in terms of performance wise. 83% for me and 75 for the opponent. So that's not too bad at all. So we're going to just um, have a look and see if there was any major dips as we do. Let's see if there's any lessons to be learned from there. So we pushed through the centre, we grabbed it, saying a blunder, but we had our explanation. It's opening up, we can take the queen or the queen can take whichever way. Uh, so we take and we look to improve the position with the bishop and castle keeping everything nice and safe and put a check on the king and supporting supporting the defense of this area here because we didn't want the knight to be a bit too funky bishop comes through again so we bring our bishop through and we bring the bishop back it's showing plus 3.1 there at that stage but then it drops with this knight move because obviously the bishop could take the knight um, but to me, it wouldn't kind of really improve their position. Doubling the pawns for me is okay. And then the king moves down. So the gauge bar is just going up and down. So we explain this position as well. The knight attacking. So if the knight takes, then the bishop can take. So that felt really quite good for us. And then obviously we explain the fact of there's potential for the rook being able to take the pawn, the bishop off the board. If there's... Um, movements of this pawn etc etc so we bring the bishop back and then they start pushing the pawn down okay so then we bring the rook up enticing this pawn to come down to it because we know we can't take this pawn as we mentioned because this bishop's going to come here but if that pawn then comes down the only piece that is defending this bishop is the king so if we bring our rook down so it's all a bit of tricksterish type thing you know it's um tricking the opponent um to to take a piece away from a piece that is protecting the pawn it's naturally going to do it it was lucky that they did it but that's we explained what we were doing and they actually did do it so that's the benefits of trying to do these trickster things um if you know what you're doing then at least when it comes off, you know you've explained it and it's not luck. So the knight comes down attacking our um, rook and we did say, well, if the knight does come down and we didn't get to finish our sentence and the knight came down so the bishop could take, which is then going to free up time for our rook to come across and have a two-on-one on the bishop. So in reality, the bishop could move back one. So then at least it's not going to be in the threat position when the rook takes. But it's moved to the wrong square. So that allows us to then get the bishop off the board. We did take a time just to have a look and see if that was going to improve our position. And it seemed to be okay. So it's plus 6.8 at the minute. So taking the, taking the rook I didn't feel was the best thing. Um, I don't think we probably would have lost out. I mean the knight could have probably jumped back here. So if, it, if they take, take like this, it's actually jumped up plus 12. 
you know so the knight could just come here and just block it off if it wanted to or could move the king across either one of those you know could have happened so i don't think i needed to lose too much sleep over that but i did <laughs> um and i got arty all right so that would have given me as a plus 12 if we'd have just done the simple straightforward stuff so it's plus seven at the moment they bring their rook down and we gather a pawn so it's plus 7.5 so it's a slow process and they push the pawn down so then we decided well we might as well just take this rook off the board because bishop can block it off so it's dropped it's plus 6.4 so we're giving them a little bit more advantage i know it's not much but these things going forward oh it's jumped up it's changed its mind it's plus 12 plus 12.5 so there was about four what's it four or five moves to get to the position that we would have had if we'd have simply just taken the rook off the board so that is something probably key to think about um i got a little bit arty i think there in terms of ownership of the file keep it simple i did have the knight and the bishop that could block it off uh, but it's hindsight is a wonderful thing because i'm sat here now when i looked at that position and i just went oh well the knight could simply have just done that or the bishop could have blocked it but during the game you you forget those simple things so the rook comes across so we bring the rook in readiness for the bishop basically coming to attack the pawn i think again that's a little bit arty really so we'll bring the king across just to try and get it involved a little bit closer towards the pawn and it's dropped again plus 7.3 so we're giving the opponent some more play again in the game when really we didn't need to we over fancied the game so then we brought the bishop through and then we captured and yeah this is all a bit arty really and at that point there the opponent left the game so key thing for me is definitely even though even though what i said during the game I, I believed in it i thought well no we've got to do it this way or else we're going to lose tempo all that sort of stuff and but really just keeping it simple and just taking a little bit of time to have a look at the realistic position on the board 